Hello everybody and welcome back to Wapleville. This is day five of ReaperCon, I think it is. It's more like day seven for me because technically we've been doing this since Monday. It started Monday with basing and now we're going to get back to basing in the form of some water effects. And what we want to do is take this figure here with just tree bark, right? Nothing fancy so far on that, but what we want to do is create something that looks a little bit more like this. Now, I don't think we have ourselves a chance to do some water over here like we got in that little collecting pool there, but we can certainly do a cascade here, and we can have what might be a freestanding water thing going on over here. So we're going we're gonna to try and do that here. We'll also be sort of using the foliage over here as a bit of a Oh, shall we say, oh, there we are. We welcome in our intrepid moderator. Thank you so much for coming on in here. He will be at the ready with a whole bunch of links for, well, a whole bunch of different products here. But look at this, folks. Wicked Elf doing the sub thing. First, we'll get Wapelius to snag one of his, because there's nobody out here to catch him. There is nobody out here to catch him. But one of the things we will be working with, to, well, yeah. A few of the things that we will be working with here is some very nifty vellum plants, which are going to go on a couple of these figures right here. So we got a bombshell figure, and we got ourselves a classic Reaper figure. These two are going to get a treatment, oh, like this guy right here. You see that lovely vellum foliage right there? Yes, we are going to do that. Now, the other thing I'd like to do is on her in addition to the little bit of water effects we're going to do here I think we're going to play with some vellum butterflies also wicked elf and uh, now there's a then you can also if you use the Wapelius code at wicked elf you will get I believe a 10% off and I do it is with a capital L or a capital L capital W so sorry uh, let's see. Wait, well, pelly has got some. No chance to chase him off. That's it. Yeah, there was, well, technically there's some people out here, but they're not actually being painted right now, so they don't count. Oh, hey, TJ. How are you doing? Welcome back in. All right. Oh, ReaperCon 2020 for 20%. Never mind. That's all the better. We have some interesting tiny tufts from Gamer's Grass. This is the first time I've seen the really tiny ones. We also have these from Gamer's Grass, and if you recall... Oh, hey, Kit, how are you doing? And Primal Ace. Uh, let's see, currently painted up. Oh, Primal Ace is using the oils. Now, remember we were trying to match the flowers to this color? Well, we also want to get some of these flowers on here, and I thought maybe the butterflies would be landing on some of the foliage over there. Now we're also going to try, on that same figure, we are going to try some of this. This is a, a nice, super quick curing resin here, so we don't have to worry about letting water effects dry or cure or anything like that. Uh, let's see, so... Uh, and Trash is... Oh, hey Trash, how are you doing? We also have these lovely little items right here. These are just fantastic because well if you got those you can make these we also have let me just ah here we go we have also from wicked elf we've got ourselves some leaves here we're going to try and paint some of these because it's easy to get fall leaves what's harder to get is green leaves and if we want green leaves to be attached to any part of this well we could use these leaves and paint some of these so we'll give that a try too we also have ourselves some tall grass and we have a couple of different this is really interesting to see how different these are and the green stuff world ones are even more different than this so everybody has a slightly different way of doing their flower tufts ostensibly these are the same but yet they are quite different and go back to Basing here, let's see. Uh, boom, boom, boom. 
Uh, visas are one of my favorite things to work on. I, I was told, and people know this story, just joking around at the GW store, I was told, Jim, you are not allowed to play games of 40K with just your bases, even though you could, because there is enough to... There's enough information on those bases. Now here we were hiding one of those Dark Sword Broccoli bases with, yeah, sticks, rocks, paste, and cork. And it just gives them a little bit more oomph than, oh, just chucking them on a base with a tuft or two. Just like our bombshell lady right here with a couple of sticks. And actually I just uh, sculpted this tree stump here. That gives this whole thing so much more pizzazz. We want pizzazz with our basing. This is another way you can get some pizzazz here. That's just sticks and bark. Oh, but look, we had some foliage here. We got flowers. We got ground cover. We got all this kind of great stuff that we can add. That's tall foliage right there from Green Stuff World. You had all these different things in combination. All of a sudden, well, you got something there. Uh, let me see. I think we're all caught up there. Now this, remember I was showing you this yesterday? Take a look at that. Uh, nice and clear. Look, we even got little air bubbles in there. Does that not look like a cascading waterfall? Well, I certainly think it does. And that is going to form the basis of our waterfalls. And we're going to start with that just because we want, we want to get this thing moving along here. All right, so there's your, that's what your waterfalls are going to look like. Oh, hey there, Inner ex Excellence. Uh, huh. It feels like the answer should be no, <laughs> because it, it doesn't feel like I did. I, I, I tried to. I, I did my best. We got a little bit. Oh, we're also going to be doing snow effects. That's uh, This will be a split stream here. We have to work around Kathy's podcast and drying times. So this is going to be for later tonight. This is going to get snow and icicle effects on it because, hey, snow and icicle effects, who doesn't love those? And there might be more surprises too. But first and foremost, I'm going to get some of these things out of the blast area here. I'm going to get our resin, our curing resin out of the way. We are also going to be adding this to our water effects. Now I might have turned down the brightness of the camera even turned down some of the lights for this to show so don't be surprised if it gets a little bit darker. We're going to get some of our tufts over here too. First things first. So how the heck did you get this? Or how did I get this? Now uh, let's see. Oh Angry Ham has tried oil for real and it's definitely a different beast isn't it? Now we got beef in the hole. Let's see, couldn't uh, sleep because I was too excited to get back to streaming. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like that. Inner Excellence, I do believe. Uh, well, I, I wear spandex. Uh, superheroes get spandex and capes, right? I too would like to have spandex and a cape, or maybe just a spandex. And maybe it doesn't cover a whole lot either. It wouldn't have to be an entire suit. It could just be a very small suit. So this is your. Liquitex heavy gloss gel, right? Now, oh, Grimguard wants to see the griffin, so here he is. There's your griffin, and we are later on, we are going to put snow and icicle effects on him. And we actually, well, we did a second one here too. That was not the only figure that we painted. We also painted this guy and his little gems and his little uh, Jack o' Lantern there. So we did that one as well. Now we've got just a blister pack. You know I like to use my blister packs. Oh, hey there, Docker. How are you doing? So look at, now you can see just how structural this Look at how heavy that is. Look at how heavy that is. Now we're just going to get this plopped down here. I just got this from Amazon, but you should be able to find this stuff. Oh, geez, at any Michaels or... Hobby, like any kind of craft store, art store, something like that. Now, we, we won't put that away entirely. We're going to need some more. So, it actually starts out like this. It actually starts out white. But what we are going to do is we're going to spread this around. You saw that big old blob, right? All of a sudden, it's not such a big old blob anymore. 
It starts to spread out. We're going to give ourselves some space along the edges here. Now this is why it's good for flames. Just while I'm doing this, this is why it's good for, see that, uh, doesn't that start looking like fire right there? It could also be waves. I mean, look at these waves. Look at that. Doesn't that look like waves? That's why I love this stuff, because there's no pouring, there's no two-part mixing, there's none of that. You literally just take it out of the jar, and you just start doing it. Look at, I mean, this right here, if you were to just stick this on a base, just right here, look at the, and you can add, I usually just add something like a, a ghost tint, or I guess some people would use inks. You could use, uh, God, what are those things? The uh, contrast paints does the same thing. And now, look what's happening here. Look what we're doing here. Now, let's see. TJ Bird, please share the product you use to mix with the oil. Going to run out and get some. Uh, there you go. There's your link, TJ. So that is the Mona Lisa Speedball. Now, it, it's important to get these sort of striations in here. Oh, and there's another hard lesson. You know, I always try and save you guys the hard lessons. By all means, make this as thick as you can. Because the first time I was doing this for one of my projects, I didn't make it thick enough. And all it did was just kept tearing as I was trying to remove it from this thing. So just as a PSA, make this stuff as thick as you can. And I mean kind of thick because that other piece I was almost a little bit worried that I didn't make it thick enough Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun, thank you so much for the follow to the gobbo all right now we get some shadow on there see the look at all those striations in there and those are gonna stay that's that's the thing about the super heavy the heavy gloss gel maybe it stays maybe it doesn't I don't know but I do suggest making it as thick as you can because otherwise it could be hard to get rid of. Oh, Pixel Cat is up to mischief. Look at that. And what probably is, is like, I can grab all the bits. I can grab all the things. He's like, I'm going to grab all these. I'm going to get up there and get that thing. He's going to get this thing. He says, thank you so much for all those subs because there's nothing to chase him away. Look at this. He's just going wild. He is going crazy because there's nothing to chase him away. So say we all. So say we all. Uh, look at this. Balzacious is getting one. Oh, and Anzig is going to get one. Hey, Snow Treasure, how are you doing? Uh, oh, and Vlager Dragon strolls in and just so waves at everyone. So now we've got to give ourselves some uh, regular vegetation here, too, before the water effects go on. We want to have some veg. Oh, we got Bill Robertson in the house too. So, Bill, those brownies almost gone. I mean, like almost gone. <laughs> I did get to eat those other ones. See how that foliage kind of trapped under the water there? See how the foliage trapped under the water here? We got to do our foliage first, and then we can do some water stuff. A couple of ways we can do the foliage. Let's say we want to cut ourselves some leaves leaves like this I'm gonna grab myself one of my little containers of leaf holding right here so there's some of my cut leaves right there oh hey whiskey how are you doing oh, let me see oh hey there's Balzacious and Sky King in the house too now we've got you got leaves here. Now you can, sometimes you're lucky you get green leaves to be on the ground, but more likely it's going to be something along the lines of this here. Let's just throw a couple of leaves out here. We'll take Mr. Leaf Cutter here. Just pop these off of there. Now it is more advisable to do this sooner rather than later because the leaves are a little bit less crispy. For me, though, I'm, I'm just trying to save these so that people can see the process of it. So you see, we can see we're getting ourselves some 
nice little leaves here and they just uh, for the most part they just fall in my little container here sometimes they don't but what's nifty about this is see all the little vines and stuff on the leaf or the little uh, spines and everything you get to save some of that texture so Bullsacious and Bill how are you doing and of course thank you again Pixel Cat for all those subs it's appreciated now even though obviously greenery is sort of the focus on these well leaves on the ground tend to be more brown than green if you do the and actually armored wolf can tell you more about the glycerin soaking of the leaves because he does a fantastic job of that it does preserve your color more there is no doubt about that so you know, here's some there's some leaves over there we got some leaves right here we'll set our and again these are from green stuff world uh, let me see I think we've got everybody caught up right now let's just put these guys back here one second and get ourselves a stuck shelf here for some reason there I want to get my flowers on here first. I'm going to pick out some flowers off of this. Now, fortunately, that's all nice and dry. We're just going to super glue these on. We are going to grab ourselves, oh, something to stick these on with. Oh, look, speaking of Reapercon, we got one of the, the fantastic skulls here. Let's zoom in here just a wee bit there let's make sure we got you some focus and I think we'll just maybe put one over here one over there and that should just about do it and I'm gonna have two different sizes let's go with uh, maybe this larger one over here uh, maybe this one and I think the glue is uh, relatively good enough on... Yeah, we don't need to put extra glue on there. So we're going to press these guys down. And then we're going to spread these guys out. And that's the nifty thing that you can do with something like this or uh, just a pin or whatever. So that is spread out. And now it starts to look, well, a little bit more like this. We could even take some of this and just glue a couple of these. See how some of those little pieces came off? We could even glue a couple of those petals onto the flowers over there. Hey, Dragon, my miniatures, how are you doing? Now we need a smaller one of these. We don't want two of the exact same size. We do want a smaller one here. And maybe this should go, let's say, right here. I'm going to make this go into the right spot. I think that is just about the right spot. So, now look at this. That little splash of color already starts to frame the figure just a wee bit more. But wait, there's even more. Because also from Green Stuff World, we have some foliage here like this. This actually has a little bit of red into it. This could be fun. This is their tall shrub, oh, tall shrubbery, I guess is what they call this here. So again, from a green stuff world. Let's just take a chunk out of, the, out of this here. And it kind of looks like a big mass of nothing at this point. Uh, I'm doing okay, Dragon Eye. We're just, uh, we're almost through ReaperCon. We have almost survived. We're, we're, we're close to surviving. We're almost there. The finish line is somewhat in sight. There's a nice little bundle of plants for you right there. And this, I'm thinking more behind her. So I see it would kind of, look at that, forms a nice little backdrop for her. So that would go somewhere back here. Now it's a little bit too tall. See how that's almost the same height as she is? Well, we don't want that. We also maybe don't want that giant of a bundle. So we are going to take some of that away. We got two bundles again. Oh, hey, Papa Wood. 
long-time lurker but new to the hobby, gearing up to paint my first minis. Love all the pointers and tips. Oh, thank you so much for that. That is appreciated. And what probably is, he's going to just be going wild this stream. He's like, there is stuff for me to eat and there's nobody to chase me away. Except for plants. Maybe the plants will chase him away. Now, a couple of ways we could do this. Uh, if we want to put this right over here. You see that, that cork? In theory, you could do something like this. And actually just kind of punch a little bit of a hole in that cork. So let's let's see if we can make a little bit of a hole in this cork right here. I'm just literally digging away at that cork over there. Now we're going to get our scissors, wherever the heck that is. And we're just going to try and slice some of this away. We just gave that a little bit of a trim. I think we might peel away a little bit more of this, not too much of it. So something like this. Now oh, look at this. It's a bit swore already. Shots fired. Is Felonius Monk in the house? Sorry if I missed you, Felonius. Ah, there he is. So how are you doing? Let's see. Uh, Blick has the Dilarami oil paint sounder set on sale. Six colors for 25 bucks. Well, there you, there you go, folks. You have... You have your alert. If you want to get some some of the demo roundies, there is your. Oh, thanks, Papa Wood. I appreciate that. I appreciate. Hopefully, all of this craziness just gives people, like you say, a little bit of a helping hand. Now we're gonna just. This is why I kind of like this glue here because it's got the same capillary as action as oils. So I'm just going to let that glue sit there. We'll just let that glue sit there, do its thing. Let's see how it acts as a little bit of a frame. Oh, no problem, Palos. Oh, and thanks for the subscription. Here. What well, Palos is like, he's like, all you got is flowers. I can grab this. And he's even going to grab this too. We got the cheer and the bits wars going on. Thank you so much, everybody. Now, let's just make sure that stays there. There's a couple of other things you could do. We could put some tufts down here as well. But for right now, we're just going to leave that sit right there. We could even... See, we've got this smaller tuft over here. Or smaller batch. Could even take something like this. Now, we'd have to have it at a different height, maybe. It's also a little smaller, smaller batch right here. Where did our little pokey thing go? Where did that go off to? I have no idea where that went to. There it is. Do we put one in front? now? Nah. Let's put that one over here. So we're just going to make that hole again. Nice little hole for ourselves here. And the bulletin board cork... It's really easy to do this with. You don't need a drill bit or anything like that. Let's get some of our glue in here as the bits war continues. Who just participated? Ah, Dirty Habits is making a dirty habit of the bits war. See, that is one dirty habit you don't want to lose. So, there we go. See, we're starting to build up some foliage here. Now this doesn't want to stick. We can always do something to support that. But I think we're just going to leave that sit there for right now. now. Maybe we will give it some support. We're going to give it a little extra support in the form of Luke's APS glue here. Is the bits who just uh, participate? Oh, dirty habit and art. Let's see. Uh, do we have a question here? Oh, Quillescence, how are you doing? Having the heads up on the oils really saved me today. Took it nice and slow and tried a lot of stuff. Well, that is, that's definitely what you want to do is give it just that, take it slow, right? Take that nice and slow. So see what we did? We just changed it around a little bit. We just put some glue there. We're going to let that sit there and have a chance to do its thing.
Now this over here, we want to try some of our foliage plants here, wherever those went. So we want to try some of these. Thank you so much for the cheer. Oh, and Quilescence gets into the cheering too. Thank you so much, folks. We love those cheer wars. Now, of course, she's dangerous, so Wapelius is going to maybe hide a little bit. Well, now, how are... I'm curious, so uh, the little uh, icons that you see here, thats it's interesting how they change from person to person. Let's see, Dragon Eye tried the oils last night, felt like a noob. Oh, definitely keep working at it, Dragon Eye, because, well, I tried them, and it was it was definitely new to me as well. It was definitely new to me. Now, with this one, I believe we were thinking of some of these type of flowers here. Uh, Gray Wolf Studio getting in on the act as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's get ourselves just a flower tuft right here. And these are, again, a little bit more subdued. For whatever reason. Uh -huh, even Grimguard Studios. Thank you so much, Grimguard. For whatever reason, putting flowers at the, the base of the figure, it just kind of, I don't know, it, it really helps the figure blend into the base, I suppose. Ah, and we have a Book of Wapple. We are going to... Well, we'll get to that in just a second here. We've got some timing issues going on. Now, I think the most appropriate Book of Wapple phrase would be something along the lines of this. Here, let's, let's wander down here. Oh, and Spider-Man. Thank you so much, Spider-Man. I do believe this one applies. Nothing replicates nature better than nature. Why are we using cut leaves? Why are we using sticks? Because it really does replicate nature better than nature. I mean, it just, it's, it's fantastic. I've tried sculpting branches. I'm way better off just using a branch. Uh, let's see, Hippo Homicide says, uh, uh, let's see, sorry to be ignorant. What are these bids and what are follows on Twitch? Uh, let's see, Papa Wood, uh, which base uh, this base was made from? Tree Bark. Just like this one, this is a larger base here. And what we're going to do is our waterfalls here. So that is what we're doing next. No, oh, thanks again, Spider Man. Oh, hey, Gurney, how are you doing? Uh, let's see, Quillescent asks, how many pages are in the Book of Wapples so far? Right now, there are 33. Yes, there are 33, and I would be adding more, but there's just, we've been a little bit busy with the Reprocon thing, so I haven't had a chance to add any more. But I'm sure by next week, there'll probably be about 40 of them. Now, here's another case of nature, bark, and sticks. It is literally tree barks and sticks and if you want to see how all this stuff was made I based 22 miniatures on Monday so you can just go back and you can watch that session you can even see how bases like this one were constructed and we were painting this one was this yesterday no this was two days ago see losing my mind already yeah this is one we did a couple of days ago we might actually throw a couple of uh, tufts on here, not flower tufts, but some kind of uh, dead leaves or whatever onto this one. Now I am going to grab, let's see, this one here, and I'm just going to throw in some of these larger tufts here. Now these guys, they are a wee bit on the fragile side, so when I take these off, I definitely want to use a pin here. And I'm going to get this tuft. I like to throw the tufts down at the base of the trees here because it just kind of hides the seam, essentially. So look at, look at what that grass tuft already does. That's already doing. Now I'm going to take a smaller tuft again. We're always trying to vary the size of these things. So there's a smaller tuft. And you go. And now we're going to throw one more tuft, a smaller one again, and that's going to go right here. 
Let's press that down, spread it out. These tufts are going to be essentially the anchor points for that vellum foliage that I was telling you about here. Now here I had plenty of bark and cork to drill that into. That other one's made out of Sculpey. That's going to be a little bit harder. So what we are going to do is an anchor that vellum foliage in some of these little tufts right here. So we set this one aside now. Uh, let's see. I'll hail the silver feral. Okay, we will take a journey. Let's see. Oh, I know what I'm doing tonight with a glass of bourbon. Uh, let me see. Now, speaking of basing, okay, that that other one we saw with the painted marble, take a look at this one here with the painted eye of Zinchan there. So as we travel off here, we are going to head on down to the tomb kings or the tomb cities of Susenes. So this, this is a wee little project as we like to call it here, right, samurai? Right, Jack? A wee little project. This is not actually the entire army. This is most of it, but it's not all of it. You can see that the movement trays and the bases on the movement trays are all integrated with the floor of the inner portion of the temple. This was also the army where I first started to use the fluorescent paints. You can see that fluorescent green, the fluorescent magenta in there. Look at the bases. See those uh, skull or the, the demon faces and the skulls painted on the base? That was the first time I'd really tried something like that. Most of the army was heavily converted and or scratch sculpted. Those guys up on top, the two big beasties that are made are, are blue, the screaming skull catapult, the objective markers, and those carrion birds. That was all scratch sculpted right there. Those were made of sculpey, your objective markers, and those carrion bird bases all made out of Sculpey. I am hoping to start doing some sculpting Twitch sessions at some point here later on in the year. So there is your tour of the tomb cities of Susenes. You can see kind of what basing can do, terrain. That's what introduced me to all of those texture pastes. So the texture paste that you see on here, the very first time I ever used anything like that was on that army many years ago. Uh, let me see. There are dryers that work in. Teeny, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite set of yours. Now we're gonna get some of our our leaves here, and we're gonna get some more of our Luke's APS glue, and we're gonna try a couple of different little things here. We are gonna try. Ah, uh, here's here's one of my favorites. Look at this. So this is the uh, forest floor ground cover. Look at all the nifty textures and colors in this. That's Is that not fantastic? That is some fabulous stuff right there. Now we're going to get some of our tufts out of the way here. We need ourselves a little container. Uh, we'll use this one here. This is the neat thing about the Luke's APS glue. You know, we'll just get some of it out here. You can actually water this down. It still has a lot of hold, but the other little kind of side benefit is that you can, uh, it'll really sink down into the crevices. It's almost like it has capillary action. Who would have thought glue could have capillary action? So we've just we've mixed ourselves up a little bit of glue here. And let's just start right in here. Just get this going right away. Because we want this for sure underneath our water. And we want that to be, well, maybe not necessarily dry right off the bat, but we have a wanna have a chance for that to cure just a bit. Now couple ways we can do this. We just have a little bit of a brush here. We're going to grab some of these leaves. And we're just going to start throwing some of these leaves out here. Again, we don't need that. But we want some leaves. So there's a couple of our leaves just going to sit out there. Let's get some more leaves. 
You could also use that sand and gravel glue that I was showing you yesterday. So we got ourselves some leaves there. And now we've got this. And we got all kinds of, again, colors and textures. Look at how this, it just looks like dirt. Right? It looks like dirt mixed with a bunch of other things because, well, it's dirt mixed with sawdust of different colors. So right away now, you see how barren this looks on this side? Uh, let's see. Do you ever use the oil-based clays? Uh, for the only other stuff that I use is maybe epoxy sculpt and the Sculpey clay because those, well, I have used the DAS air drying clay, which actually... You can do some stuff with that. That's that's not the worst stuff in the world, actually. I, I don't mind that stuff at all. That is not the worst stuff ever. Uh, the oil-based clays... They're, they're, I don't, I, again, the, uh, the Sculpey clay is really just the king of everything for me. Yeah, let's get some... Uh, now, actually, have you used it? That's the next question. Is have you used it and what have you found? What kind of interesting, cool things have you discovered about it? We're going to do the same thing here. Let's get our leaves. Actually, we've got a couple sitting out here. You can place these carefully or you can just drop them on there. I've, I've done both. I've placed them on there. I've dropped them on there. So now we've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a deadfall foliage thing going on now here. I'm just put a pile of them here. Do we have yeah, there? Let's grab one of these leaves and just throw you right there. Put you and the glue off to the side. We're back to our. Here, let's get some of these little orange pieces going too. So look at all the fun, different colors that we have working here. Look at that. It just Look at how that adds so much more flavor to this with so little effort. Hey, Patty Kane, how are you doing? Now, let's see. I've been using your newer dry brush oil technique with great success, much easier and amazing. Well, I'm glad, Patty Kane. It's kind of wild, right? Just You wouldn't think... Something as simple as that could make such a colossal difference, and yet it does. Now, let's fill in the rest here, and this is mostly going to be our some of our dust and dirt and a couple of leaves. Let's throw a couple of leaves out here. Sometimes it's nice to build up a little pile of leaves like that. When the glue dries, it'll dry clear. No need to worry about that. Thank you so much for the follow, Tanlin. I appreciate that. Oh, let's see. Can I miss the... Oh, so the... They're actually not leaves. They're... We're using the Green Stuff World Leaf Cutter. So you actually just take a leaf, quite literally a leaf, and you cut it, and that's what... Uh, those are actual real leaves in there. Uh, let me see. Oh, Mikey asked, does DAS work with the rollers? Uh, Mikey, I have seen, oh gosh, Zorp Zorp use it. And he used it on terrain, which was okay, but it's going to crack. It's going to crack, it's going to flex, it's going to do a whole bunch of things. When you do it with the DAS, you're not going to get this. This this is not going to be your result. But let's say you want to do a road, like a cobblestone road, on a piece of terrain, and you don't care if it cracks because you'll just put, well, stuff like this into the cracks, which he did, and it looked fantastic. But if you're looking to do it for a base, I would just suggest using this for it. Uh, and also, the other thing, too, is that that DAS is going to want to stick in your roller. So that's those are two things that I would say use the Gray Extra Firm Sculpey. Uh, let me see. Uh, did Sky King have a question there? Sorry if I missed your qu uh, question there, Sky King. 
Let's see, a vicious circle asks, uh, I was wondering where do you store all those miniatures? Uh, let's see. We don't want to get the paint paint damage. Oh, hey, how family. How are you doing? Welcome in. Ah, okay. That's a good thing to try. Now, you can't see it, unfortunately. But this base is magnetized. Now, you can actually see that. Yeah, that's a refrigerator magnet right there. If you take a look at the blog, and the the name of the blog post is called, I think it's either a making a making a better case or making the case, something like that. It shows how I store my miniatures in these stackable plastic cases. So again, they all have magnets on them, or see a magnet like that. They are all magnetized. There's a piece of sheet metal. And they all go in those cases, and that way, well, there's basically nothing that can happen to them now. You could almost hold them upside down, and nothing's going to happen to them. We're going to give ourselves another little scatter of our stuff over here. Now, okay, we've done that. What about maybe something that's got a little bit more greenery to it? Maybe something like this. So this is from Woodland Scenics right here. So how family, how are you doing today? Uh, let's see. Uh, Mikey RR, it's, uh, yeah, unfortunately, the Das Clay, uh, it could potentially ruin your roller, and that would definitely be something you wouldn't want to have happen. So I, I would suggest, I know if, if you have the Das Clay, I know it's tempting, but that could be very... Very much not the thing you want to have sticking in your roller. So we're going to add just a bit more of our dust here. But see, now we got some greenery on that. It's all about... And we haven't even added our water yet. We added a flower tuft, and we added some of this. Now what we want to do next... Where's my... Here it is. I absolutely love this stuff. Here, we're going to have to make some room now. Oh, we got an Alaska in the house. How are you doing? Well, hopefully it's not too late for you. I think it's probably about 9.47 for you at this point. So glad you'll be able to catch. You'll pretty much be able to catch all of this this part of the stream. So this is from Green Stuff. Uh, not Green Stuff. Well, it's from Woodland Scenics. Look at these things. They are essentially miniature trees. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much a tree right there. Now what we're going to do is grab ourselves some chunks and some pieces here. And I got my eye on this. And I got my eye on this. So take a look at that. That is a nice wee little shrub there. Which, oh, I don't know could look kind of nice right next to her. Now that might be a little bit on the short side. How's about something like this? It's a little bit taller. So all of a sudden now we've got some, now we have some shrubbery that we can put here. Once again we're going to take our little pokey tool here. Oh, that looks like it's a little bit hard for that. If it's too hard for that, out comes the pin vise. And we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a... Just make a little bit of a starter hole for that. In comes the pokey tool. And now we can... Well, let's get our tree stuck in here. I'm just going to throw some glue in here. And we'll try and get Mr. Tree stuck in there. Here, let's, uh, let's make a deeper hole all the way down to here. There we go. We'll lose a little bit of the height of our tree, but that's okay. I'm going to get a little bit more of our glue in here. And now we can give that some support over here with another little batch. 
So that's what these little blobs are good for right here. Let's take some of this away. I'm going to get another batch of glue in here. And we'll get this piece stuck in here too. So these couple of pieces right here, what they will do is just kind of hold that tree in place. See, now it kind of, we got to think composition, right? We got to think 360 degrees here. Oh, hey, Sonker, how are you doing? Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Uh, let me see. Don Mac. Resin printed a bunch of rollers, but Green Stuff World has some awesome, unique rollers. Actually, that sounds good. Hey, Don, you have to send me pictures of your rollers. You got to send me pictures of those. Um, Navarro, it's, I love the fine leaf foliage. It's not as fragile as you... It, it sort of looks fragile here because I'm holding it and manipulating it and, and kind of bashing it around. Once it's in place, it's actually pretty solid. I've used it on my bolt action figures. I've used it on, well, pretty much absolutely everything. You just have to kind of lock it in place. So that is now in place. And we're just going to let that also have a chance to sit there for a bit. We can also use a another, you know, some tufts of foliage to give that some extra support here. I would like to get this other tree on the other side of her here too. So we're going to do that too right now. Gonna drill ourselves a little bit of a hole here, maybe a little deeper. Already lost sight of my pokey tool again. There you are. You wouldn't think you lose sight of a big old skull like that. Some glue. And here's another nice little shrub here. Which way we want that pointing? We don't want that angle. There we go. I want this to be a little bit shorter here. So now she's got a little bit more of a frame going on there. And you're just going to get just a touch more of our glue into that and drop some more supports in there. And we'll just leave her off to the side. We also wanted to work on these guys here. Now what I'm just going to do is grab my scissors, if I haven't already lost sight of those. And we're going to try some of these smaller and mid-sized ones. So just cut right around those. And I've got myself a, oh look at this, a little container of that, uh, just a empty ice container, uh, snow effects container. Uh, let's see. That's better. Uh, you can find the bark outside. I missed where you got the bark from. You can actually, sometimes you can buy this stuff. Uh, think mulch. So sometimes you can just get yourself some mulch too. Then it's going to Pop this down here. I'm going to get my fine leaf foliage out of the way for now. Just move that to the side. Oh, this is another thing I wanted to... I forgot. I almost forgot. Here, let's get a little bit more of our glue into this. That's not the right one. Let me get my cap onto this. Now, the Luke's APS stuff, I will tell you, it's... It, it's sticky. <laughs> it gets sticky uh, really fast, and it will. It's kind of hard to wipe off your hands. Not like just regular old Elmer's glue. So, if you get it on your hands, you really would just kind of want to wash it off right away because everything else will stick to you. Uh, Quillison say to do designate one day out of the week to go on a nature walk. Well, there's uh, there's really no nature bias here. There's just one city block after another because we are in the city but there are lots of trees around so we just when the opportunity strikes 
we just try and grab ourselves as much foliage as we can. <laughs> Some years are better than others. Last year was horrendous for leaves because it just, you either had 50 mile an hour winds or 30 mile an hour winds and rain and rain. So yeah, we, we were not able to get a whole lot of our, our foliage last fall. That was, that was a terrible year for foliage. Now, what's the material of the little tree? That is from Woodland Scenics. It is called Fine Leaf Foliage. I always just call it Realistic Foliage, but it is called Fine Leaf Foliage. So we're doing the same thing that we did on our other base. But if we want to do those water effects here, we've got to... We have to get some of our foliage down in here. I just realized that. So I'm just kind of taking my glue, shoving that glue in here. A little bit of that up here too on our rocks. And more of it here around our rocks. And we'll just try and wipe some of this away. Now again, this is getting on my fingers, which means my fingers are going to be sticky, unfortunately. I'm going to actually throw a little bit of my Woodland Scenics. See this leftover stuff? I'm just going to throw some of that in there, too. I'm going to come back with this. You don't want that stuff in there. get some of our fine kind of dirt and texture here. So it's going to fill all this in. That's why I didn't really bother painting that very much. Uh, oh, Patekin, you took the Wicked Elf. Yeah, those are uh, Wicked Elf. plant. We're also going to try and use some of the butterflies too. This is another thing with basing that I strongly recommend is you use or work on as many figures as you can because sometimes timing is a thing. All right. <laughs> well, that looks a little bit different, doesn't it? That looks a wee bit more natural, and when the water effects hit that, it's going to look even more natural. So we'll set her off to the side again. Uh, let me see. You can find the bark outside. Home improvement stores as bark chips, yes, for sure. Um, so, uh, Mikey, again, go back and watch the video on Monday because you can see all of these things being made. This was actually a couple of pieces of bark here. So I do suggest you go back and watch Monday's video because all of these bases that you see even including this one here, all of the the bases with the Scopey, like these two here. Just go back and watch Monday. You can see all of this stuff being made right here, all of these things. Oh, hey, Two Guns, how are you doing? Uh, let's see, and Punexpected is also in the house. Uh, let me see. Yep, we're going to start painting some of those Wicked Elf plants now that we've got see that that stuff so that's going to sit there and that's going to kind of glue in place so with some of this stuff right here that's just going to have a chance to set in place and i'm just going to use some uh just a little bit of acrylic paint on these guys here for our vellum plants just going to use some reaper clear liners because i mean it is ReaperCon after all I'm just going to gather some of this stuff and get this out of the way. Let's put you guys off to the side here. And now we're going to reveal. This is a little bit different of a palette here. I don't have a, a wet palette set up, but this is actually where my oil paint palette usually goes. That is just palette paper. Now, for the folks that maybe weren't here at the beginning, where did that go? I put my my new batch of water effects, which is this. So we are going to be using this. 
I'm not quite sure where my water effects thing went that I already did, but we will we'll try and locate that at some point here. I'm sure I'll find it after the stream is over. We'll keep this very simple here. We're going to throw out some clear green. And this is another reason why I love my oil paints, because they don't do that. I don't care what the company is. Every single company who makes these acrylic paints in jars, every single jar just clogs. And that is another reason why I love my oil paint. So here's some sepia liner. Let's chuck that over here. Oh, we'll just get a little bit of our clear yellow out here. There's some clear yellow. And we'll keep this simple. Just a little bit of maiden flesh here. Oh, hey, Numskull, how are you doing? I uh, has to go to his Sunday D&D &D session. Uh, and there, yeah, there's your code right there. Uh, let's see. Uh, catch some stream before going to bed. Uh, I'll watch Mondays after today's. So yeah, Mikey, give that a shot. Now, also, the, the YouTube channel has tons of basing. Well, the Patreon page has like 100 basing videos. But the, even the YouTube channel, that has some basing videos, too. Let's just get ourselves another one of our number eight round craft brushes here. And again, what are we trying to do? We are trying to do something like that. See the, the lovely little veins and, and such on our plants there. Now the one caveat is you've got to paint both sides of these. So it can you just have to keep that in mind. There's a little bit of our green liner. There's some of our sepia liner. And we're just going to start painting these guys up. Now it is as you can see, we're doing this relatively thin. We don't really want to pile the paint on these things. Part of it is I can actually see what the heck I'm looking at. <laughs> like where the edges of the plants are. See how that color is kind of changing a little bit too? So we have ourselves some slightly different colors there. And now we're going to start to darken these things up towards the center along our stems. Now where's there some... There's our stems. Let's turn this over. I'll get some more green in here. Now let me see. Uh, looking in the corner. Oh, uh, let's see. Kit, uh... Well, have fun at D&D, Numskull. Let's get our small ones here. So again, these are from Wicked Elf. Let's get even a little bit more of our sepia into these guys here. Into our stems. So painting the other side, there, there's really no great way to be painting up both sides. <laughs> you just kind of do what you can with it. Now we've got some of our lighter green here. And at this point now we start to work with some more directional strokes. You can see how that's just getting a little, little bit lighter. And a little bit more green. And then we're going to be putting in all of those nifty little, or what would you call them, they're the veins, right? And not the vines, but the veins in the leaves. Once again, what we're looking for is something like this. So we'll just set him over there so you can kind of have a little chance to see what it is that we're doing. We're going to go a little lighter, maybe. That might be as light as I want to go here out towards the edges of these leaves. And we'll put these on our couple of uh, Amazon slash barbarian ladies here. I think that should really do the trick on them. 
I have gotten, I used to get paper foliage. Oh my God, it came from South Korea. It cost a bazillion dollars. It was super brittle, super fragile. You had to use wire. You, you literally had to use florist's wire to make it work. So I had basically had given up on all paper foliage until along comes the vellum foliage. And as we all know, vellum is much stronger than just paper. It, it's, it can flex. You can really flex and sculpt this stuff. The paper foliage, I tried doing it. All it did was shatter. The, the vellum has more give to it. So you see how that has some shape to it? Yeah, you can shape the vellum plant. You can't, you can't do that. You cannot do that with the paper foliage. I don't care what they say, it will just get destroyed. Now it's time to really get in here with uh, something lighter here for those veins and the leaves. We'll give them a shadow too, but for now, let's go lighter. Oh, hey Spectrum, how are you doing? Let's get some of that excess paint out of here. And all of those darks that we did, oh, look at this. Look at what just, you must have dark to show light. It even counts for vellum plants. It ain't just for miniatures. It counts for everything. Nice little, look at that. And these are those, uh, that's that four dollar and twenty cent Dick Blick brush you saw, remember me using that yesterday? Well, and the day before, and the day before, and the day before, and the day before, and the day before. I pretty much, I don't think I'll be getting any more Windsor Newton Series 7s anymore. I, I do believe those are going to be retired in, fa in the favor of these. And I'm just going to keep stockpiling these. Oh, look at this. Look what we're doing here. with the. Look at these tiny little lines here. It, did, it doesn't take a $14, $15 Series 7 to do that. That is doing some wonderful work right there. Uh, so Spectrum, I hope everything is going okay. And if I missed uh, things in the chat, I apologize. This this uh, When I do the basing stuff, it's not like the oil paint where I can just kind of chill and kick back and relax. With the basing, there's times where you just got to go. I mean, that the glue is drying, the glue is there. You have got to just do it right then and there. You can't, unfortunately, you can't always look up at the chat. So if I miss things in the chat during this little basing exercise here, I apologize in advance. Now you, now you know why I love the oil paint so much because it is so chill. I can just like, yeah, I'll stop and I will just look up at the chat for a couple of minutes because it makes zero difference as far as the paint's concerned. Look at, look at all these fun little, don't they look like little trees all of a sudden? Oh, quills. Uh, this is just from Dick Blick. Just look in there. Literally Dick Blick Masterstroke brushes and that should pop up. Hey, D Marino, how are you doing? Uh, I don't have a link for you, unfortunately, because it's so it's so recent. It's only been a couple of weeks that I've really discovered what these things can do. The the obviously the craft brushes I've been using those for eight or nine years, so it, it's much easier for me to you know do the links on those things. But if you just look through Dick Blick and you just say Dick Blick Sable brushes. And, and a quick little search that will pop up. Uh, look at look at the brown. You can see some of the brown in there still. Is that not nifty? And they, again, these are the Wicked Elf vellum plants. Actually, painting these things is kind of fun. It's it's uh, as you can see, it's pretty relaxing. And we're just going to do our, now our little veins on these smaller plants. Now you know why I like the clear and liner paints. Oh, this is the other advantage of the vellum. 
is that it has translucency to it, whereas the paper is just paper. Well, plants are pretty much, especially, you know, these ground cover leaves, they kind of have some transparency to them. So that is another plus for your vellum plants as opposed to the paper plants. So they're, think of where they're winning. They're winning on cost. They win on durability. They win on ease of use because these are a heck of a lot easier to use than those paper plants. Those paper plant, and they, they just also have a, a little more elegance to them, a little more organicness, whereas the paper plants tend to be pretty rigid, to say the least. I might even get uh, just a touch more dark here. So we're going to take some of our, that's our green liner, that's our sepia liner. And we might back up some of our leaf veins here. Because it's nice having the lighter veins, but now we're going to add just a touch of the darker veins here. Now, sometimes when you're trying to get these things stuck in, it, it's, it can be awkward sometimes because you're trying to hold the miniature, you're trying to do a bunch of other things. I suppose on camera it's more difficult. When it's just me sticking them on there, it's a little less crazy. But trying to make sure that it's on camera, that, that can be a little wild. Anyway, we're just... We're doing very much a watercolor stroke right here. But look at all of the extra little... Yeah, look at this. Oh, that's another thing with the vellum foliage. Uh, and I think I might have mentioned it. Painting this, it takes the paint better than the paper foliage. The paper foliage tends to really suck down the paint. Whereas here, uh, there's a reason why scribes for many centuries used vellum as their material. <coughs> Sorry about that. So we've got ourselves some really nice, look at that. Look at all those nice rich darks in there. Oh, we have Jackson in the house. Uh, let's see, Scooter. I was talking about the other thing. Uh, the vellum is on a backing. It's just on some paper backing like this, so you can see the, the vellum has been taken away. And here are some larger leaves, and again, you know, there's your so there's your backing right there. Uh, oh, oh, thanks, Master Stroke Red Sable. There you go. Uh, I was talking about the other thing. Etch breast plants are amazing, but so expensive. Yeah, Navarro, that's, uh, I looked at those and I said, no, that's because I need tons of them. I mean, I need tons of them. All right, so we've got this here. And we got this side painted. Well, we kind of have to do the other side. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to see if I can't get that in mostly one piece. Let's see if we can separate this whole thing. It's Sometimes it's easier on plants like these because they're just, they're a little bit bigger. So see how that's mostly coming along with it here? Hello, little harvest. Spark my gun. Thanks for the follow, Sheephead TV. That is appreciated. Gandalf appreciates it too. All right, so you know, again, a couple of the leaves, they might come off. That's okay. I'm just going to take this off of our backing now. I think these are my favorite because they are just super sturdy. I mean, like, really, really sturdy. You know, I am just going to pop these things out of here. Just so you can see, look at this. Look at that fun little leaf right there. So what we're going to do now is we'll just position them on our little painting surface here. 
that does not come out of the paper foliage because <clears throat> as, as you can see see how there's no connection points here the paper foli foliage tends to have connection points there's no connection points on these leaves which makes your life a whole bunch easier so i just pressed them down here here let's uh, look at this see how it already has I mean, it already has a natural little turn to it. How cool is that? So we're just going to pop some of our leaves here. And guess what? We're going to do the same thing. Yeah, let's just pop this one out of here. So we'll get these four painted up, and let's do some of our smaller leaves here. This is so much less painful. Just that little exercise right there on paper foliage, you would not believe what a pain in the you-know-what that is. Uh, let's see, size 0 through 4, out of stock. Uh, thanks for introducing me to oils, better and better results each session. Same for me, Jackson. Uh, inner Excellence, I just use the triple zero and the zero. Oh, the just get the zero long handle because those are in stock that's what I'm gonna do because oh gosh I don't know where my other one is but so I got these brushes look at how long this freaking handle is look at this thing so I said the heck with this and I just cut it in half I basically just cut it right here with my razor saw I don't need the rest of this I just cut it right here so get the long handles and chop them in half because that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna sit there and wait for that full or for that brush to be coming around uh, where can I put this one just stick him over there I wanna get a couple of my smaller ones make sure I've got a few of these alright leaves are attached let's get back to it Now, at this point, I'm um, maybe going to not use quite as much paint here. We're going to do this, and not quite so liquid. We'll do it thin. You can see how translucent the leaves are, because you can see the stuff from the other side. But you can see I'm using a little bit less paint over here. Why? Because the other side's already painted. We don't need to put as much on there. Let's uh, get into some lighter colors here. Again, these are just Reaper Clear and Liner paints. We're keeping it, we're keeping it simple. Now let's lighten up here on the edges of our foliage, like so. Do that here too. And as I've, I've mentioned a couple of times on the Patreon page, I, I happen to know, let's see, 20, 32, 48, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of at least 60 basing videos on the Patreon page. That's not kidding. That's not exaggerating. <laughs> because if there's 20 army painting series, there's 20 basing episodes right there alone. And I know I did a dozen basing episodes as part of the paste painting pyramid. So that's 33 confirmed. I also have done 17 basing techniques episodes. So that puts you at 40. Oh, hey, Kathy's in the house too. Oh, hey, Avocado, how are you doing? Yeah, this is a bit of an earlier start. Uh, let's see. All the ho Oh, uh, no, all the Hobby Lobby brushes are out of stock. Okay, well, uh, maybe that's a Labor Day thing. Right, maybe they had a Labor Day sale and everybody just came in there and bought them. But if, if you can't get those, there's other brushes that... I, I know we have the one true brush, but there are other brushes that can work for that. <laughs> Beef and Holes has saved the short handles for me. Now let me just scroll up here, make sure I didn't miss anything... Yeah, Jackson, I really do hope that uh you know each time you try the oils, you just you you're gonna be like me. 
every time you try those oils, you're going to learn something that you just didn't know the last time around. Because that is what happens to me every single time. Last night, I learned things that I didn't know on Thursday night. And Thursday night, I learned things that I didn't know on Wednesday night. You will basically learn some every every time you use those. You're going to go, wow, okay. I didn't know that before. I think it's one of the reasons why I just keep using them because every time I use them there is some new thing that I learn and that's kind of a that's a nifty thing to just literally every time you use a material something new comes out of it yeah just a very simple clear reaper clear green some yellow a little bit of sepia liner now, these will probably be the undersides of the, well, not probably, these are going to be the undersides of the leaves. I also have to keep these darker. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're painting your leaves. Think, well, okay, this is the underside, so maybe we won't get quite so much with the highlights on the underside of the leaf here. Now the the ferns are going they're going to require some more delicate treatment than what we afforded these guys right here just just by their nature. Uh TJ is back with supplies to paint. Uh let's see. I uh, know what you can label you know, pies for those being on a stock streaming 24/7 for the last Oh okay. Yeah, that uh I do think I know people have said, you know, do you get any uh, kickbacks from whoever sells those? I think I should. Because, uh, let's see, what is this? This is pretty much uh, the only day this week we did not... Oh, no, technically we were streaming on Tuesday. So I believe I've been streaming every day this week since Sunday. So, yeah, this has basically been seven con seven straight days of streaming. Now, remember, we're saying these are the undersides, so we're getting darker here. So this is essentially green liner that we're using here to make this a little bit darker. It's also the underside of the leaf, so we do not have to be quite so precise either. I am going to try and make that stem a little bit darker. Not all the stems are going to be that long either. We will cut down on some of these stems. Just like we did on the foliage on the, the lady that's going to have the water effects or the uh, UV water effects. All right, so we've got these leaves ready to go. We still have some more over here, but let's just let's work with what we got. So again, you can see what what it is that we are after. And this is this is the one we're going to be dropping our water effects in. So we did our, and these now they've had a chance to solidify a little bit. I'm just going to blow some of the extra junk away. Now this is bulletin board cork, which means it's also nice and soft. What we're going to try and do is position some leaves behind her to kind of form a backdrop here. So we've got some of the bigger leaves and we got some smaller leaves. And we like to do these in clumps as well. Uh, let's see. TJ, how do I usually stream? Typically, schedule will be Monday night, Friday night, and Saturday during the day. Those those are kind of your most likely times. Sometimes that will change. Sometimes there's Sundays like this. This is I can't remember the last. I don't think I've ever streamed on a Sunday before. So this is the basically the first time I've ever done this. Uh, let's see. Has Master Touch brushes half off once a month? Very affordable and worth it. Yeah, I I don't actually have any affiliate links. Um, obviously, I think I deserve some, but no, there's there is no affiliate links unfortunately. Now we're doing our see our little pokey tool. Look how it sticks into that so easy. Look at that. Is that not great? Where's my other hole here? I put one down here. Now I'm going to have that over here. 
I'm just gonna make that hole a little bit bigger. Not so big that I crack my my cork, but big enough so I can get that leaf to sit down in there. So let's take our leaves off of here. And this this is just blue tack if you're wondering what this is. Now we say we can we can do some sculpting with these leaves. Well, I can have these leaves. Actually, I have I've got something that I think I have used in the past. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is basically a little pipette right here. Now look at my, let's see how my leaf has some curve to it. And if need be, I can just pop this right in here, but I don't want it to be that long. So I'm just gonna take a bit of that off of there. This is another thing that I sometimes do is, see, I'm going to just pinch this here. Uh-oh, Dr. Feedgood wants to start a bits war. Well, Peleus likes bits war. He's like, man, you can't stop me, you can't stop me. He's like, ah, oh, man, what the heck? He just got attacked by a leaf. He thought he was safe. He thought he was just, he was invulnerable, and he just got attacked by a freaking leaf. That is cruel. That is absolutely cruel. So there's our leaf sticking in there. Now what we'll do is we're going to give that a partner. We're either going to give him another one that same size or we give it a smaller one. Ah, uh, the anonymous cheer strikes again. Will we ever re reveal the identity of the anonymous cheer? That, is that your task, is to reveal the identity of the... Oh, look at this. An armor was strikes back, strikes back hard. Let's see, a vicious circle. Uh, you won't have enough hours at day to watch all the YouTube, Twitch, and Patreons. <laughs> like vicious circle says, uh, let's see, whoever the secret to this faced man is, he's a painting genius. And while Peleus always says, thank you, he's going to eat some of those. And all of a sudden, the plants attack him. He's like, ah! He's always getting attacked by plants, by chimeras, by something. You know, let's get these little one of these little guys off of here. One of these little guys off here. Let's just make sure we don't tear that. There we go. Gotta remember which side is which. Alright, so this is my this is the top side here. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a sculpting. See how it has a little turn? It's not just flat. The paper foliage just wants to stay flat, which is boring as you could possibly imagine. Now, I'm just going to try and make that hole a little bit bigger. I'm going to try and put a little bit more super glue in there. Again, that's why I like the cheap, nasty glue because it really just does have capillary action and just kind of sits in there. Yeah, let's uh, cut this about there. Let's see if we can get you sit down in here. We'll give you a buddy. So there's his little buddy. There's your leaf and his little buddy. We're going to throw a little bit more glue, and now that those leaves are there, there's a little bit of our glue again. Again, the capillary action sets down. And now we've got ourselves some leaves sticking out of here. We can bend these. Once the glue dries, we can bend these, move them in different directions. But remember, we got one up here, too. Right there, a little hole for that one. Time for leaves. If the hole's not deep enough, we can make that bigger. So let's do that. Clearly, we needed a deeper hole for this. Get 
back to our leaf again. Uh-oh. We have some stream buddies here. We have some stream buddies. We have Jiro and Genius. They are the, they are the minds behind it. These are the true creator. This is actually, we don't actually exist. These are the painters that you see. There's, there's Kathy and there's, there's me. There's, there's Jiro and there's Genius. <laughs> We're just gonna. <laughs> they, you, you might have seen those once or twice on one of Kathy's streams. Uh, let's see. I like that glue too. The little tubes are great. The, cause the bigger bottles always seem to harden. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll see. See, Kathy advertised puppet shows. Uh, I, I just mod here for the miniature skits that happen. Uh, let's see. Uh, do recom do recommend using the pre-primed mini or adding other primer too. I always just prime the minis, e even if I don't know. Maybe they're one of those. Yeah, I just I just prime everything, and that's just with the Badger Steiner res. I might just brush it on. Now let's see. Vicious Circle was gonna watch a Patreon video and then seen an email of Twitch. Tried to watch two at the same time, but not, I'm not as so smart. Uh, so that Patreon video will have to wait. Yeah, everybody, everybody loves Genius and Jiro. Everybody loves Genius and Jiro. Now let's get some of these leaves in front of her too. Now do we want to have some here? Yeah, let's have another one over here. Oh, thanks, Avocado. Thanks so much. Here, let's make a another hole up here. Let's do that right here. Can you see that hole we've made? Nice little crevice here. Let's make that deeper and wider. Let's pull off a couple of leaves here. Let's see if we can do that. Again, this is just a little bit of blue tack. Now, for folks that watch Kathy's stream, and she's going to be streaming on Monday. Well, no, she's going to be doing the Discord thing on Monday. So give that a listen. She's doing the her Hairbo classic. She's painting gummy bears on the Discord on the Reaper Discord. I will uh, maybe uh, Trevor can send her a Facebook message asking her when uh, when on Monday she might be doing. It. I think it's in the afternoon. We're gonna fill this up because of course our intrepid uh, moderator doesn't have enough to do. So, look at that. Look what's happening there. Is that not, uh, is that, are you not entertained? Maybe we can put a smaller one over here. Maybe a couple of small ones. You know, it's, it's not you, well, let's just use this one here. What the heck? Let's do that. Oh, let's see. I think you just sold me on these plants. I never liked paper ones. Oh, these, I have those 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 ones I told you about that I bought years ago. And by years ago, I mean seven or eight years ago. I it must have been. They're still sitting there. The rest of them are just sitting there, completely unused. All right. So there's one. Here's another one here. Just pop these off of here. Those paper plants, they could never survive. What I'm doing here to these things <laughs> could never survive this. That's for sure. They would have they would have torn to shreds. All right. Good enough. I am going to give these stems a little bit of a pinch right there. I'm going to try and make this bigger. wee bit larger and hopefully it's big enough for our plants to go in two of them not just the one I'm, I'm hoping for both of these to fit in here and maybe that's going to be a little long I shorten it up a bit there's one. Come on. Here's our second one. 
Ah, look at See, we got a little bundle there now. Ah, uh, Dr. Feegood says, I thought they didn't have a face cam, genius. Well, that is, that's the face cam. That, that was me getting some FaceTime. Yeah, that was, that was me doing a little FaceTime there. So, look at all these wonderful little jungle plants that we've got now. Ah, uh, 2 p.m. Central, uh, where we paint the actual gummy bears. Now, Avocado asks, what kind of base is that? Uh, actually, Avocado Kids, just go back and watch Monday's session because you can see all of this stuff being done. So it's bulletin board cork. See that bulletin board cork right here? And this is earth texture paste from Vallejo. Again, just go back and watch the session to see is that 22 bases being made. Yeah, and just go back, check that out. I think you will have a blast. I think you will really like that. Now, we don't want to use flowers here. So... There's your vellum plants, right? And look, we got a couple, a couple more we can use on a different base. However, remember we wanted to use some other things besides just the giant grass tufts. Well, let's use a couple of these small ones, shall we? Now these sometimes can be interesting to get a hold of, like that. Just bear with me here. Eventually my big old fingers will get this. So see, that's not the, the giant bit of foliage that you're used to seeing. Look at how tiny these guys are. Look at how small these guys are. And you can see where they're going. They're kind of going at the base of these, so it sort of hides that, that hole right there. And some of these are, I mean, some of these are just tiny. I mean, just absolutely tiny. So I'm going to put another one over here. But I don't have to only use those small ones. Remember, we do have this. And it looks like i got a small one right here. That baby's going to go right down there. So I've been I've been told some of the things that you well one of the things you never see on Twitch is is basing or almost never see and that is one reason why I've been trying to emphasize that a little bit more here for people is because apparently just nobody does basing on Twitch I have no idea why because I absolutely look, look at that see that rock now it's set into a bunch of Nice, lovely foliage right here. Oh, yeah, seaweed. So these are also new <clears throat> from... Uh, here, let's grab some of these. You'll be seeing these on some future videos. You've got seagrass. you got your kelp and seaweed. Look at that, and there's some larger ones too. Look at those big ones. So yeah, you're going to be seeing this on a whole bunch of different sea creatures. Oh, look at this guy right here. Look at that, and Kathy's got one of these to do. So yeah, you're going to be seeing a bunch of that from us. Now, you'll also be seeing it in one of my army painting episodes, too. Now, here's a little bit of that fine leaf foliage, too. This is why I just never throw away scraps. of anything because that's just gonna go right there oh look now it supports that and it doesn't look like it's just kinda hanging in the middle of nowhere we have some more of it here and we can use this, this little little bundle over here just throw that right over here So we're getting a whole bunch of different, uh, look at all that lovely greenery right there. Remember, we've still got our Luke's APS glue here. Oh, actually, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I almost forgot. How could I have done that? 
here we go. So this is more of that shrubbery right here. This is from Green Stuff World. I'm going to tear some of this off. And perhaps we use some of this. Maybe not so tall as what we did on the other base. But what are we looking at? This is the same stuff as what we used over here. But probably not quite so tall. We are going to take this into a couple of different bundles here. I'm going to cut this off. Hopefully get a handle on this. There's a nice little bundle for us. Here's Mr. Pokey Tool, because, you know, that's his name. Mr. Pokey Tool. I think Mr. Pokey Tool, we were going to stick this right over here, maybe. And where did our glue go? Is this bundle about the size that we want? Yeah. Might be on the larger side. I think we might cut down on that bundle just a little bit. Let's see if this is going to fit in here. So now we've got a whole different type of foliage. Remember how plain this looked? There was really not much going on. It looked super plain. Doesn't look so plain anymore. Now we've got some more of our We've got some more of this. We're just going to throw that right in here. So it kind of hides, again, the entry point of that. And what's the last thing that we've got here to add? We can go either with the Luke's APS. Oh, let's go with this. It's got It's got some nifty color to it. And in this case, I think we're not going to use the we're just going to use our super glue here. We'll keep it simple. Just going to grab some of this. And I'm even going to throw it in a couple areas where I know I've got super glue that's trying to see how it looks like dirt now. Throw a little bit of that here. This is the reason why we did not spend a whole bunch of time painting rocks. So that fills that in now with some, look at all the different textures and colors that we've got going on this thing. That looked absolutely plain before, but now <laughs> we've got four different kinds of foliage and actually five different kinds of foliage on here. Didn't take very long, did it? Uh, let me look up here. Let's see. Oh, we got Hootie Hoot in the house. Uh, let's see, did you add, do you, I, I'm going to put a wire with those. It's just going to be, a, oh, what is that called, foliage wire? Uh, sorry, I'm just going to be looking up. That would be so helpful. We'll check the basing madness for science. Uh, let's see, yep, gamer's grass. Uh, oh, hey, Hody Oot, how are you doing? I'm just going to scroll back through the chat here. So yes, I will be adding a wire to those kelp ones. And uh, I've, let's see, the mini with the two. This is from Reaper Miniatures right here. It's actually kind of an older one at this point. Uh, let's see, what mini is the... Yep, okay, we got this. Uh, Zip Zap Wrap, I have painted tufts just to make them the right colors because sometimes I just run out of certain colors. Uh, let's see, I need to get all of this stuff. Is that tub of stuff from... Nope, that is from Luke's APS. Hello, little harvest. Spark my gun. Thank you so much for the follow, Dicey Guy. Dicey Guy. So, Luke's APS. If you're looking to get this in the United States, there is Footsore North America. That's where you can get the stuff here in the U.S. If you're in Europe, well, just Luke's APS because he's located in Europe. And this is from... This is from Reaper Miniatures. 
basically everything except for one or two of these figures that you're going to see they're all from reaper i think i think this one is a dark sword but i think absolutely everything else is from reaper so she is good to go now but we also have had the host of the rohirrim ride to ruin and the world's ending here we go these guys were painted in oils oh i want to say about five months ago yeah on one of my very first Twitch streams ever. So that's kind of why these guys have a little special place when they get mustered by the Rohirrim. That, that's when we call out those guys. But we also have an entire army painting series on the Rohirrim. And these were just... Uh, oh, yeah. Bulletin board cork. Oh, thank you so much, Painter Kiana, for the subscription. Oh, Peleus is going to come out and he's going to grab that splash. Look at that big old splash. And he says, nobody can stop me. And he goes, oops. He's gone. She says, those are mine. Those are my bits. All that is for me. So we'll set her aside. We might add up maybe a couple more little things. But we'll get her off to the side. Remember, we can add more jungle things to this. We have not forgotten. Now this one is from, this is from Bombshell Miniatures. But it's sculpted by Patrick Keith. And we all know that. Patrick Keith has done many a Reaper miniature, too. Oh, look, we have some more of our little vellum plants that we can use. Here, let's pop some of these guys off here. Yes, we have more vellum plants. Now, this thing is made out of Scopey, so if I'm going to put plants in this, I'm going to actually have to drill holes into this, which means we're going to do that here. It'll be a little bit more difficult to get some. Actually, this uh, this might be a resin. Oh, this is a resin cast. Okay, so this will be even more interesting. That's going to be really interesting getting those. You know what? Actually, we're just going to use. We're just going to throw some of our leaf leaves in here. That's going to be easier because we don't have time to be drilling through resin. I thought that was Scopey, but that was when we were trying to resin cast our bases years ago. So that is not going to work so well. However, what does work well is our lovely vellum plants from Wicked Elf. So, hi, Dice Guy. How are you doing? Now, let's see. Are all these links all U.S.? I'd love to get some in Canada. Um, now, Luke's APS, you can choose... The North America, which would be United States, or you choose the European. I don't know if shipping from Europe is any better for you. Uh, let's see. Scooter asks, can you overbase? I, I suppose you could. Now, here's another thing we can do. Look at this. See, I just folded that in half. Look what I'm doing now. So let's give this a different shape. This is what you can't do with the paper ones because they just crack. And I'll never forget the first time I, I was all excited about the paper foliage. I painted them all up. Well, at least the ones that didn't tear when I was trying to take them off of the thing. And then I went to shape them, and every single one of them cracked and broke. And I said, well, I'm not using this ever again. All right, so we're going to tear these. We're going to make these a little bit shorter. So shorter. We are also... See, I pinch this a little bit. I'm going to do the same on this guy here. Give that a little bit of a pinch. And I'm just going to glue my leaves into here. I'm just going to say the heck with this. I'm just going to chuck some glue down into the center of this little Tootsie Pop right here of foliage. And I'm just going to shove this leaf in here. And maybe this other one, too. So there's both of my leaves set into that shrub. I'm going to give it another shot of my super glue. And see the capillary action of that super glue? Look at that. It just sucked it right down in there. So this is why we place those, those uh, shrubs right there to give us just a little bit of support for that vellum leaf. 
Now we've got one more leaf over here that we're going to try and put in. Now it's a small one. And that one's going to sit over here. Just got to get it in my hand first. We'll give it a little bit of some, some shaping there. And now we got ourselves another leaf over there. Now over here, eh, maybe we'll just, uh, now that we got a hole drilled in that, we'll just cover that up with a little bit of a piece of shrubbery here. And now that the skull looks even a little bit more mysterious there, so right away, look what we have going. I think... We're going to maybe grab a couple of these little guys, too. Just like we did on the other one. Because these are kind of handy. Nah, maybe not there. Maybe over here. Like it's kind of just growing out of that stump. So these little guys here, I wasn't quite sure if I'd ever be using these. They've proven to be handier than I thought. Look at this. Because every, what do you see? Most grass tufts are super tall or they're just kind of the same exact height. It's kind of neat to vary the heights of these. Uh, let's see. Ecto says, uh, hope you're having a good weekend. Hey, Ecto. Actually, yeah. This, this Well, this is, you know me. I love basing. I absolutely love basing. And after we do... This one, I think we're going to get to our UV water effects because, again, timing is everything. We're going to go back to our, this again, this is from Luke's APS. There's several types of this. There's not just this. Let's say we wanted something that's more, more of a brown. Let's see that. That is a... Uh, that is sawdust scatter earth ground. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this here. Scatter in some of this right here. So say that has kind of a ground cover look to it. It's not doesn't always have to be green. I'm going to chuck some more in here. So that gives a whole different little look right there. So because we got plenty of green happening, right? Now there is another place where we could throw some green. And we're actually going to just go back to our Luke's APS glue here. I love this uh, fast drying glue. It's it's pretty neat stuff. I do have to find wherever that went my little container here of that is also from Woodland Scenic. So Woodland Scenic should ship absolutely everywhere. I mean, like everywhere. You shouldn't have any problem trying to get them to ship to you. Once again, we're going to water down our glue here. Like so. Just going to throw a little bit of our green flock onto this tree. It may be a dead tree, but it doesn't have to be devoid of anything green. Some of our greenery here. And again, folks, if I missed something in the chat, I apologize, but basing is about timing. And when you have glue, you just have to use the glue. <laughs> It's not quite as free as, say, when we're doing our oil painting, where I can just kind of look away and do whatever. Now, I am going to get some more of this green down here. Just a little bit. Presto. Look at that. Look at that. That stick now looks a little bit more alive. 
we've got all this different foliage here we've got grass tufts of various sizes those are from gamers grass we have our vellum plants from wicked of woodland scenics luke's aps it's a golden age of miniatures right now they make it so easy for us i mean there's so many different products now Let's get some of the stuff out of the way because we got a fun little thing. I mean, again, same thing. Now I sculpted the mushrooms there. There's, uh, you can't buy those. I had to sculpt those, but there is a Patreon video that shows how those were sculpted. <laughs> In fact, there's two of them. That I know. I'm just gonna make sure we've got anything that's loose out of the way. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Gamers Grass makes some really neat stuff. Huh? Hello. I think, uh, Scooter, this might be the perfect one to try. Let's see what happens with film noir. What does film noir mean? It means go black and white. Look at that. It still frames the miniature, doesn't it? You can And look at the extra texture in the base. So that still works. Let's look at, uh, where's our one that hit? Ah, let's look at this one. So the color may be gone, but look at the composition. And you can see all the wonderful shading on the leaves. Oh, hey, Deadbeat Artist, how are you doing? So now let's bring back the color on her. I mean, yeah, you get to see the color now, but she didn't look so bad in black and white either, did she? Not at all. Now our next little adventure in basing here is going to be with our from Green Stuff World UV resin. Now I do suggest that you do this on smaller projects because this is probably not the cheapest stuff in the world. If you're going to do a big old terrain piece you might just have to do a regular resin pour. However, however when you don't have boatloads of time like none of us has boatloads of time I don't I don't think any of you guys do now we're gonna have ourselves a little tool like this that's gonna help push the water along and again this is all about timing so if I don't see chat messages just bear with me here now let's start to fill this in And this is, it's gravity sensitive here, folks. So we are just going to do this much right here. Let's make sure we push this basically to wherever our gaps are here. All right. Now, before further ado, yes, that is a UV light. And if you see smoke, that's not about to catch fire that's just a natural part of the process it just means that it is curing and this should cure in seconds rather than hours or days that that is the advantage of this type of stuff now I was going to do lily pads on this and then I realized somehow I must have used up every last lily pad on my last couple of dark sword videos for the Patreon page, so we'll 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 get some more and we'll we'll do some more of the lily pad videos. Now it, it can take sometimes a few minutes to fully harden. But yeah, that's that's hard. That is not gonna go anywhere. So that is water in seconds as opposed to hours. Shall we do some more? Uh, let me see. Uh, Navarro says actually the monochrome would work great too. Oh, thanks, Avocado. Hey, look at this. We got Danny M. Gray Wolf, I am not kidding. I mean, you throw in 3D printing now and all the other possibilities with miniatures, it is quite the golden age. Now, of course, I immediately lost my tool, so I'm just going to make another one here. I just got to pull this stuff into my little gap right here. Okay, now here's the other thing too. 
What's nice about this, because this cures in seconds as opposed to hours, all that foliage that I had, what can happen, and I, I, this happened to me, much to my dismay and disappointment, is that the foliage sucks in all of the, all of your, your water effects. And first of all, that can be disappointing because now you have no water effects in there. It can be extra disappointing when it gets like sucked out on top of your base. And I've had that happen too. So that's the benefit of this stuff. And we just want to make sure that's as cured as we can make it. Oh, somebody also had a question about the fluorescent paints. So there's our fluorescent oils. Look at that. Check that out. Isn't that fun? Uh, let's see. Have you tried the resin for dirt algae effects? Um, is that their green one, right? I haven't tried that one. Um, they have one that's like an orc type of a thing. Unfortunately, that one was uh, that was like dried up or something. So I'm gonna have to get another one of those. It seems. That, oh, Danny, thank you so much for the host. Thank you so much for the host. We will get to that host in just a momento. But we are right in the middle of doing a little bit of a resin effects here. So we shall get to that as soon as we can. The Rohirrim shall ride to ruin and the world's ending. Now, I don't. can you guys see the smoke that's coming up here? I mean, it's like a little wisp of smoke. It's, it's barely perceptible. See how that rock is partially underwater now? But look at those leaves. Don't they look like they're kind of suspended in water? All right, that's a good... Look at look at that. Doesn't that prov look at the depth that that provides? That I just absolutely love that. All right, let's throw in some more over here. And like I said, I do suggest using this on smaller bases as opposed to larger bases because you'll go through it pretty quick. Now I'm going to give this another shot here. Uh, I I do also suggest you not be really looking at this while this happens because it is a it is a UV light. Ah, I think I just saw a little whiff wisp of smoke there. Hey, Primal Ace, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. So I haven't been around. My work restricts my time. Ah, okay. Well, sorry to sorry to hear that, Danny M. We're almost here. This is our last batch over here. I'll give that a shot too. And now we are good to go on our water effects. We could even have leaves floating in this if we wanted to. We could add some more water effects that has uh, a little bit of, uh, what would you say, some waves to it. All right. Water effects. Uh, let's see. Currently, paint minis and oils as we speak, and it's going well. Oh, Primal Ace, I'm really glad. Check this out. Look at that. That didn't take much time, did it? Really adds a lot to that base. I'm telling you, I just absolutely love basing. It, it doesn't have to just be some grass tufts on something that's painted brown. It can be more than that. Now remember her. It's time for some waterfalls. We've kind of been saving this for for last here. And again, this is what we're going to do. This is the idea here. And somewhere, I now I have to find what happened to my waterfall effect. I, I know I put it somewhere just to keep it safe. I'm just going to need to find that now, wherever the heck that thing went. And that was what we used our our lovely water effects for. Well, it's not technically water effects, it's just Liquitex Heavy Gloss Gel. That's all it is. It's very simple. So one second, just give me a chance to locate that wherever it might have gone. And we just put it out onto a, well, you can see some of the blister pack that it went onto here. 
All right, let me just find that. Sorry, folks. Sometimes things just go missing when you're doing this much stuff all at one time. So again, your your vellum plant. Look at how strong this stuff is. I mean, I'm really trying to rip this. That's not tearing. Ah, there. <laughs> Finally tore. That's how strong that stuff is. So what I'm going to do is get some of these grass tufts out of the way at least, and see if I can't find it by putting stuff away. Now, we haven't had a chance to use these guys yet. Hopefully, we get a chance to use those. Now, actually, maybe we can just review a little bit what we did. I'm just going to find myself a blister pack here. Any old blister pack. Grab ourselves some of our water effects here or otherwise known as Liquitex Heavy Gloss Gel. You could also use palette paper like this. Now if you use this, it's, it's not really going to stick as much, but it also might curl on you. And that's probably not something that you want to have happen. So we're going to take our Heavy Gloss Gel here. And essentially, you're doing something like this. You want this to be as thick as you can make it. You don't want it to be too thick, but the thinner it is, the more likely it is it's going to tear. Uh, let's see, Grey Wolf Studios has a clear UV resin for 3D printing, a couple of UV lights. Uh, I don't know about that. It may not quite be the same thing. Uh, you can give it a try. I guess it can't hurt to try. I'm thinking it might not be quite the same because this does not cure. I tried curing 3D prints with this and it doesn't cure those. And it also doesn't quite... F oh, it's also not quite so uh, difficult to handle, I guess you could say, as regular resin. So again, we've got this. Now, this is too thin over here. I found that out the hard way. You want it, see that, the thickness of that? You want to have that kind of thickness. So we're going to set that out over here as I continue to desperately search for my little sheet of water effects that I made. And unfortunately, it is clear, so it's going to be really, really difficult to find, of course. And as far as the blister pack goes, sometimes uh, some blister packs will actually stick. Uh, most, ah, there it is. Yay. There we go. That's what I've been looking for. Look at this. See how that starts? All white and everything. Well, that's what it looks like once it's dry. And this has been overnight curing. That's why I did that one last night. All right, this thing goes out of the way, all this stuff out of the way. Move out, move out of my way here. We want a waterfall that goes this way. We want a waterfall that's over here. Let's do these guys first, but let's make sure we get all of the loose stuff off of here. I wanted this to set. Remember we did this first? Oh, what, two hours ago we did this? Uh, last thought, it was by a water pot under your palette cam. Uh, let's see, you moved it off your palette when you added the acrylics. Worth a shot. The lights they have are 405s. Yeah, that's Grey Wolf. People have told me. Oh, and, oh, let's see. Avocado asks, where did you learn how to be so amazing? And did you study art as well? Well, actually, I will show you those after we glue this down. We have a couple of minutes. I will show you some of the past art that has done, been done. Let's give ourselves a little cut over here. There, look at this. Cut, and you can stretch it too. Look at this. It's like stretch Armstrong. Stretch Armstrong. How wide do we want this thing to be? Maybe not quite that wide. Or maybe wider at the top and thinner at the bottom. But we are going to... 
I sort of like this piece right here. Check this out. I kind of like that, the ending of that piece. Maybe that's something that goes over here. Just give you a cut. And I'm actually going to store this stuff over here. Now that's that's a good place to store it. So see how we've got ourselves a potential little waterfall-y thing like that going on? So maybe we, we set that aside for over there. We got our piece over here. Now this will stick to things. So that's another reason why I kind of like this stuff, because it has some sticky properties to it. Oh, hey, Baron, how are you doing? It's time for some water effects here at last. Now, it's probably not going to work. It's just having one big old piece of it. So we have to do small pieces here. Something maybe like this. All right, so something more like this. I know that doesn't really look like a whole bunch there. But we've only just started here. Now I'm going to grab myself another brush to use for my water effects. Okay, where did you go again? Where's our, this is our piece here. I'm just going to steal some of this. So let's throw some water effects down here first. Some of our gel. I'm going to throw some more gel down here. And keep in mind that this stuff will dry clear. It's going to start out it's not going to start out clear. Thank you so much, Avocado, for mustering the Rohirrim. We can never have enough Rohirrim. Here's my piece. Stick this down. See, I'm kind of giving that nice little shove right there with my finger. And you say, well, that just looks like a piece of tape. What's going on with that? It starts out looking like a piece of tape, but now we're going to add some things to it. We're going to add some more texture here. Right up there, we're going to add some more texture over the top of it. We're going to add some more off to the side here. That uh, basically is, uh, that's your, your armature, essentially, right there. Let's do some more over here, too. And all of a sudden, the, the edges start to disappear. You don't see those edges anymore. It starts to just look more like flowing water here. See how that's going to just flow right over the edge? See how we got some almost like some water splashes over here. And all of this stuff is going to again, it's gonna dry clear over time. Now, let's say what if we want some foamy water there? Now it might not show up in the beginning here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this. We've got ourselves a raiding party. We have D uh Schachtenbrummer. Schachtenbrummer. Blumler, yeah, sorry, say that ten times fast. Well, thank you so much, or Dunka, maybe I should say, for the raid. Now, here's some of our snow, and we're going to mix that with our water effects. 
snow and water effects this is going to make it more foamy so this is not going to dry clear this is going to dry white so welcome in raiders thanks no eye for welcoming in our new raiders and now we're just going to position right here we got a foamy a little bit of a foamy waterfall going on here now and you can almost see the I know it's kind of it's difficult with all of that white I might actually cut down on some of the lights here how's that I think it's as light that's about as dark as I can make it but now this has a bit of a foaminess going on so thank you so much Dave, Dave for a the I'm sorry the let me get my let me get my camera controls out of the way the Schlachten Bumler, Bumler. <laughs> thanks again so much for that raid so we're adding some water effects here trying to make a waterfall base uh, just like what we did here so this is what it's gonna dry like right here that's how it's gonna dry we just have to realize as we put this stuff on here we just have to realize now when I come back later tonight folks oh somewhere in the neighborhood of about six hours from now we'll see what this has turned into and I'm I know I'm looking forward to it I hope you guys are but we're just gonna we're gonna get the rest of our waterfall on here and this is just Liquitex super heavy gel right here. Oh, is a Cutthroat Couture in the house? Well, thank you, Cutthroat, for the thanks. Thanks for joining us here. Now I'm gonna create a separate little stream right over here. Just a little separate one. See how that that that's structural? Look at how that actually holds there. So we can also create a smaller kind of offshoot of the waterfall right there. And, and you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to go after that edge to make it less straight. All right, let's do that over here. There we go. We could even do this. Let's get rid of some of the extra now. Watch what's going to happen here. Look at that. So we just added another little mini waterfall there. So we have our big waterfall here, but it's just like our plants. We have a dominant plant, less dominant plant. We have threes, the law of threes, bigger, smaller, smallest usually the smallest next to the biggest and the medium sized one off to the side just like we have here we have different size waterfalls here so we have the big one here we have the small one and now we basically have what's turning into a medium sized waterfall over here but remember how we, we talked about timing is everything we had to add all the plants first. We had to let the plants dry. You don't let the plants dry and, and solidify. We're, we're, we're in trouble, to say the least. Now, we want to have some of that water hanging off over here, right? Where's our little pieces for that? So here's our piece. For our hanging waterfall over here, well, we can't have it be quite so long as that, so we're going to cut it down. And we're just going to get this way out here on the edge, all the way out here on the edge. So this basically becomes your armature here. And what we are going to do is take, not super glue, we are going to take, ah, here it is. This is some of our Luke's APS glue here, because guess what? That's going to dry clear. And let's see if we can 
find our little piece here. Here we give that a little bit of a fold, and it, it can be sticky. And now we're just going to have to hold this here for a little bit. Uh, let's see. Welcome to the party, everybody. Let's see. Uh, the Lazy Butchers. Uh, so Kathy has been studying her Dutch. And obviously there are some similarities to German, to say the least. So she's been able to, I think, uh, kind of look that up. So again, this is not the easiest thing to do on camera here. Okay, that just doesn't want to work, at least not on camera. So we're going to do something different here. We're going to take a different approach. We're just going to go straight up water effects here. And how can we do that? Well, guess what? It's the same way we would do an icicle. Thank you so much for the follow, Red C. Let's get some water. A little bit of water here. And this is the same thing we do with our icicles. I'm just a uh, I'm kind of running out of time here, so I don't have a whole lot of time for screwing around. Here, I'm going to anchor that, and then we're just going to pull this down. And you can see we just set, look at this. We just kind of keep tugging away at that. And see how that kind of falls over the edge. And if I use some water on this, it actually also thins out my water effect. Look at that nice little water drop we just got there. You can see some of this is already starting to go a little bit transparent. You can even have just a little bit of water down here, or we can connect these two like so. Just about have those connected. There we go. Gonna get a little bit of water mixed in with this, kind of thin it down. Sometimes you just have to play with it for a little bit. And now we've got that connected. We can have some more waterfall in here. So there we go. There's another part of our waterfall there. Now we got to spread this out. We've got we got the the main parts of our water. We got to spread this around a little bit. And we're also, again, we're thinning this down, thinning it down, spreading that out. Do we want some water coming this way? Maybe not. Maybe we leave this dry. Uh, let me see. Even all Sunday. Oh, hey, Chrissy Lids, how are you doing? Uh, let me see. Uh, Schlachten Blummer is a fan of a sports team that travels with the team to an away match. Oh, hey, Gurney, how are you doing? I'm going to continue with some more water over here. And I could do the same back here with this stuff, except I've got a smaller, thinner piece. Yep. I'm going to cut this down here. Cut that down, and hopefully, yeah. Now my hands are pretty sticky at this point. 
Got to be careful with that. I'm just going to let that stay right there, and then we're going to pile up some more of our water here. Like this. I'm going to get some more of my water effects out here. Again, that is the Liquitex Super Heavy Gloss Gel. Uh, let me see. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, rarely used, even in German. Uh, let's see. I'm uh, going to chill, sort some bits. Oh, well, thanks, Angry Ham, for joining us here. I hope that it's been kind of interesting. I know this is not what you typically see most on most streams. I know it's a little bit unusual. Yeah, let's uh, get some of this over here too. We can just kind of keep adding this yeah, as much as we want or as little as we want. And some of this over here is just meant to help hold that in place. Gonna add a bit more onto this side. See if we can have more watery things coming down here too. Come at maybe just another little trickle of water falling this way. And when this all just turns nice and clear. really is amazing. Now if you want to tear that a little less, if you just uh, mix some water with what you're doing here, see how that just kind of hangs down there? So we have plenty, of, look at all that, uh, look at all that waterfall stuff we've got going on. Uh, let's see, Dr. Figo loved the trick with making the gel sheet first. I've done it with plastic from a blister pack but the sheet is so much more flexible and easier to get in the shape. Yeah, there's no heating it up or anything like that. Uh, let's see, just short, oh, the Tomb King bits. Okay, let's see, do you sell the pieces you create during the video? Um, we do commission stuff, and I, well, let's just put it this way. I'm going to have a dozen miniatures or more after the end of this, so if you want to shoot me a PM, either Instagram or or something like that, or catch me on Facebook. Just uh, shoot me a message because we've got a ton of miniatures. You've seen them being painted, so we've got we've got her. We started off uh, Wednesday with these right here. Oh, here's another one from Wednesday. You can go back and watch all of these, folks. You can go back and watch all of these. I think this was another, was this another Wednesday one here, maybe? Uh, let me see. I huh, thought it started at 3 three fifty. Yep, there we go. And uh, we've also got, well, now we've got some of these that have their, oh, while that other stuff is drying, so let's say we wanted to put some kind of ripples into this. Geez, thanks for reminding me. I almost forgot. What if we want to have some ripples in this? Because the the f that's a little bit too glossy or you know glassy of a surface there. What if we did something like this? Now again, this will all dry clear. However, see how we're doing a little bit of wave action here. And when that all when that all dries here, I'll hold it this way so you can see it. So yeah, there will be some Reaper uh, miniatures here that are. I, I would say it's it's best if you are located in the U.S. because shipping anywhere outside the U.S. is insane for miniatures. But we we have expanded the collection of miniatures quite a bit 
over the course of the week here. So I'm, I'm really glad you guys reminded me because look at that. All of those, they're not going to have any of that white, but now you're going to have what looks like very subtle little ripples in the water. So we'll continue that over here. This is also an area where I just didn't get as much of the water effects in there, the, the UV stuff. And a little more of our ripples here. Look at that. And all of those are going to dry nice and clear. Now, uh, let's see. Well, well, it will be sort of uh, through third party. Doesn't that sound flaring? What does it mean? Uh, more, more of our water. Let's just finish this off here. All right, there we have. There we got our, our some wave action, just some ripples in the water. This will be barely perceptible once that dries, but it's. I think it's a little more interesting than just a sheet of glassy water. So you can see it. Look at how that went all the way to the edge. We were we were able to fill this thing really nice here. All right, it's time to go back to this guy here. And it's time to finish off our waterfall piece here. Give it uh, something that looks a little bit more like actual water instead of just a solid sheet of something. But look at all that texture that we're building up on the end of that. You notice there's still just enough clearance on the base there. Actually, some parts of this are already starting to go clear which is really interesting. Here I'm going to get some more just to hide these edges. I don't want those edges to show. So see we're just we're spreading that water out here. Look at that. There's our, our lovely little waterfall. Now as you have been part of my high school's teacher bleacher creature for 30 years. These are pieces 100% message through Facebook you say. Yeah, you can message me through Facebook. That That is fine. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll do a little bit more water over here, too. We, we used to do eBay and stuff like that, but that just uh, it turned into Feebay, so we don't really use that anymore. <laughs> Sad to say. Oh, uh, You know what? I'm going to do some more over here. Look at this. I'm going to do some more over here. I'm just going to I'm going to go crazy. We're adding some more rivulets of water. Cuz why not? It's composition. Now you know why this is such it was such a wide base for such a small figure. And I still got I still got this foam right here that I can I can access here. Let's maybe put a little bit of foam over here too. I can see the texture in here. I can see the little uh that that snow texture and I can see just enough of that to make a difference. Yeah. I mean, we can go crazy. We can put more on here if we really want to. Heck, we can put a little bit right here. Let's kind of build this up a bit. And later tonight, so like I said, somewhere around but somewhere between 10 and uh, 11 o'clock tonight or so, something like that, I will be back here, and we'll we'll try and do some more. We'll do some snow things. There is much more we can do. Uh, it's basing, after all. And then we also have that, that Dark Sword diorama that we're going to do. So I want to try and paint... Uh, 
definitely the base part of it and get some some foliage on that too kind of like what we were doing here on, on these guys uh, let's see managed to get a brick of cards cheap and ocarina but the rest is just crazy shipping costs uh, tempted to do more over there but we're not going to do more over there we have a little bit of our it's a little bit of the foamy stuff. You gotta, gotta make sure you keep the water effects and the foamy stuff separate. I would say. How's their other side doing here? So see how that that the uh, rest just flat enough. I mean, it's literally just flat enough. And I'm gonna get a touch more over here. Again, the idea is to hide. You want to hide the fact that we have those long sheets of plastic somehow. And grab a little bit more. Again, this is the Liquitex Super Gloss Heavy Gel. Uh, Al Capone staying, uh, stopping by to say hello before taking a very late... Uh, we're, we're doing good here, Al. We have been... Well, this is the this is the most challenging one that we had to get through here. And we were able to do our foliage. We've been doing our waterfalls on that, but we were also able to do water effects here and our foliage. And then we also did our vellum plants here from Wicked Elf. And those were those are really fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'd love to get one of those painted pieces. Oh, hey, Tutu, how are you doing? Well, I'm glad you're able to to hang out. And there's there's more coming. Like I said, later on tonight, we are going to be doing icicles hanging off of these plants. We're going to be doing snow effects on this guy. So you'll be seeing uh, our griffin from last night is going to make another appearance here. And then we also have that big diorama that we will be working on. You know what? I might even have a little bit of water coming down here, too. It doesn't have to be much. See, there's just a couple little drops right there. Doesn't always have to be a, a lot. We're back into our just our regular water. See how that, look at how that smoothed that out. See how they just smoothed all that out? I'm going to do the same over here, too. So see that, that water? Add some water to your brush. It flattens it out. I mean, seriously, the, the same effect that we're doing here with the water drops, that is what we are going to be doing with our ice. So I think you'll I think you'll enjoy the versatility and utility of it. Ah, oh, yeah, let's have just uh, let's have some down here too, like it's continuing down here. Uh, it's just, uh, it's like Rivendell here. Oh, look, more water. Flatten this out again with our water. And then see how that just kind of, the whole thing becomes a little bit, it's a little less of a tear. And it's a little bit more of a flow to it. Get some of the extra junk off of that brush. Yeah, this uh, this needs to be managed a little bit over here. And I just I love. Look at that! It just kind of it just it created its own little water, extra waterfall right there by itself. Didn't have to work hard on that. So we're gonna position this here. We get some water into that brush. Just start pulling this down. You can add as much of this as you want. I mean, you can go crazy. And as much of this, but now it's, uh, look at that. It's all just going to be hanging down here, and all this stuff is going to turn clear. We've got stuff that's already turning clear over here, which is nice. And 
And now you see where we put the leaves. You can still see the leaves underneath that, that little sheet. That's why we do the sheet there because it's it's a little bit easier to kind of protect and save those uh, that under the water stuff. That's what gives your water extra depth. There is really no depth there, but you're creating the impression of depth by having that stuff underneath the water. Look at all these little rivulets of water here. And yet we've got our nice clear sheet right there. Uh, uh, if you sent in a message on Instagram, Avocado, I will, I will see that. I will try and check that out while Kathy's doing her podcast. I will do my best to get to those messages. And Kathy is going to be on her More Than Dice a podcast. Oh, that will be, well, kind of a 7 o'clock is the official start time. There's also the pre-ramble, I believe, starting at 6.30. So that is why I will have to be sure to... We have to do the food thing before she starts. Sometimes if you actually let this stuff, I don't want to say dry, but cure a little bit, you can pull it a little more. Look at this. I've already got like a water drop here that I can add stuff to. And this is where I'm going to thin this down again, like a lot now this time. I'm actually physically thinning down what is on my little palette over here, which at least that, oh, you can see it. And now that that's actually curing a little bit, so I could just add some stuff to that. Uh, let's see, the one thing that would work though is having an online or something like that would be worth a lot more and could reach more plastic circles, cracking them and then stacking them. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, it's unrelated, but I saw a neat video. I think it was Marco for Sony who did ice by making plastic circles, cracking them and then stacking them. Uh, actually, uh, Al, watch uh, some of the Luke's APS stuff because he poured resin into some, almost like I did here, like with this plastic sheet here, he poured resin into something and then he just took the resin out and shattered it and broke it into ice pieces. That He did something kind of like this, but not obviously that's the flexible stuff. He did that with pourable resin. And he basically made a whole bunch of ice sheets out of it. And it was fantastic. And I still want to try that. I really do want to try that. So is it not everywhere has to be covered by water? Look, you can see some of this is starting to turn clear over here where it's thinner. Uh, you know, I kind of like the idea of that just being a thin little rivulet right there. So... Might even just a little bit of water right there. So all of a sudden, the the idea is to have more than half. We can't just have half with water and half without. That's why we've been pulling the water this way as much as we can. I'm also trying to get some water effects under here. And that seems to be working okay. Again, this is where we've got our our foamy stuff here. And wow, that's really, oh, that's the other thing too, is that the Valhalla Blizzard Snow, that's going to cure that faster. I also want a little more, I want to rough this up a little bit, I think. Because that's supposed to be foamy. It shouldn't be quite so puffy and, and uh, smooth. And look at this. See, that's starting to come out over the edge of the base. Uh, let's see. I'm totally blown away by him as a teacher. Well, oh, let's see. Mickey, or James, one quick question before bedtime. Can I mix alkyd and oil paints on a project without the film cracking? I haven't done any of the alkyd stuff. I know there, there's some folks that use that. I just, I tend to, well, I don't have any of it. I just don't use it. Uh, you could experiment with it. Maybe just put it on another surface. Don't put it on a miniature, maybe. Uh, put on a piece of plastic card or maybe like a big piece of sprue. And give it a try. And that, yeah, don't put it on a miniature to experiment. Just uh, experiment with it on something else. Uh, for me, I, I just won't be using any of the alkids. 
but it couldn't hurt to experiment on, a, on like a separate piece not not one of your finished miniature or you know a miniature that you're painting at the time uh, look at look at all that nice chop well now now you can see it look at that see all that nice choppy texture in there it it gives us a little difference here i know it looks all just white right now but that stuff it's going to look where is our here it is it's going to look a little bit more so this is what you're going to get when all this dries. See that? It's got a little bit of whiteness in it. All of this, as clear as that is, it was just as white as this. It was every bit as white as that.